New fallout today from this mayhem at L.A. City Hall yesterday as the council there banned homeless encampments near schools and daycare centers. The council voting for a second time to approve that ban despite disruptions and injuries to three police officers. So now that the ban is approved, how will it be implemented? Fox 11's Christina Gonzalez is live in the Vermont Knowles neighborhood that's in South L.A. with details. Christina? Yes, I'm next to Wanda Mike's elementary fence, and they've had issues here with homeless encampments where you can see they have, become to, they have begun to move, in this case, across the street beyond that 500-foot limit. But now they're also closer. If you look to the side, there's actually a private Christian school behind that property. So it's a work in progress, but it seems that the threat is already having an effect. Watch. Homeless tents and RVs close, but in many cases just shy of the 500-foot limit from schools just approved within L.A. city limits. They yell obscenities at the kids, says one mom at the Molly High School, who says the RVs and encampments actually began moving late last week when word got out that L.A. city council members were voting on banning homeless living within 500 feet of schools. The ordinance passed after disruptive protests in council chambers also includes daycare centers like the one that operates inside this YMCA off Vermont where RVs line the sidewalk. The mayor has 10 days to sign the ordinance that we approved yesterday and we can start enforcing 30 days from after he signs it. Uh, the challenging part moving forward is, you know, we make laws as a city council, but since we have to ensure that the laws are enforced. Council member Joe Buscaino began working on the ban over a year ago. Schools in his district eight have been dealing with the problem, as in other areas like Venice. Plenty of homeless near this elementary off Abbott Kinney. The plan is to first offer the RV and tent dwellers other options and follow up with law enforcement if necessary. Street engagement, first and foremost, making that um, connection with those who are living next to schools, uh, but giving them also a timeline. If there's no timeline and there's uh, no enforcement, then you'll continue to enable this behavior that we're seeing next to schoolyards. We see like homeless people, and then like when we see homeless people, they like they like they're like signaling like the kids to come, but then we don't we don't do anything. They actually signal you guys to come yeah, over. Yeah, they signal us to like come over. And he says school staff really have been great at keeping people away. His parents very happy, like many others, that uh, they won't have the encampments next to the fences, but that saying that as long as they're that close, they can't let kids walk home even if they live a couple of blocks away. So we'll have to see how the engagement versus enforcement works out. We'll keep you updated. I'm Christina Gonzalez and Vermont Knowles. Back to you guys in the studio. Tough issue to solve for SoCal. All right, Christina, thank you much.